Hello and welcome to another edition of Exotic Ghana UK. You watch Chris Weekly on this fantastically warm, well it's like a summer's day, it's at least 23, 24 degrees and the next few days are going to be even warmer. And I'm standing here underneath the archway which has got these passion fruit flowers on it and it's also got the chocolate vine fruits which are these unusual sausages like fruits or a bit like bananas gone green and then they've gone bluish purple as well and if I just pick one we've actually got the fruits and they've split open and you can actually eat these so I'll take a little bite of this one mmm that's really sweet it's like if you've ever had dragon fruit, it's like dragon fruit mix, mixed with sort of really sweet sort of soda, lemonade, lemon, sort of that sort of taste. Really, really nice, but it's full of pips, so not the easiest thing to eat, but mmm. That is a really, really nice fruit. There's plenty more of those to eat. So, on this episode, although it's a gorgeous sunny day today, we're going to be looking at heating the greenhouse over winter. I've got a new greenhouse heater that I want to show you. Thinking about next season, before we get the exotic garden, nice to get some spring bulbs. So we'll be sowing some spring bulbs as well, planting some. And we'll be looking at what's flowering in the garden. So in this box, hopefully, we should have a greenhouse heater that I've ordered for this big space that we're in here. So in this box we have the Phoenix 2.8 kilowatt greenhouse heater and I've chosen this heater because it's got the different settings up to 2.8 kilowatts and it's got a large fan so that actually blow the heat about and fill this large space because this garage common greenhouse is 3 meters by 6 meters which is 10 foot by 20 foot so it is a large space and it's pretty tall as well to the ridge. So it's a large volume of air to heat up or to cool down in summer because it will work in summer as just a fan. So we'll get it out of the box. We're going to help lift that out. Hold you hold the box. Oh, no, look. There we go. Let's get that out and we'll have a look at what is in the box. So it's a German branded piece of kit this and it's one of the top of the range that you can get in the UK so we'll just see what we get in the box so it's quite substantial I think it weighs about five six kilograms and we'll just carefully pull this out if you want to move the box nothing else in there is it no it's quite well packaged and then it comes in a plastic bag and a good thing about this heater, just check it's got a UK plug, is we can either have it standing on the ground, because it's got these little feet, or we can have it actually hung from the top of the greenhouse, hanging down, and so it's not on the ground and getting sprayed with water and it's out of the way for plant space and things. And because it's got a large fan, we can actually blow the air about, so even though it's at the top and no hot air rises, it'll blow it about and obviously the air does circulate and come down as well. And so it will hopefully fill the space. So the controls on the top, we have got the different settings. So we've got off obviously, we've got the fan setting, 1 kilowatt, 1.8 kilowatt or 2.8 kilowatts. This is a switch. That's the on and off switch as well for the power. And then we've also got the temperature gauge. So it's a zero to 10, it's just a scale. It's not an actual temperature on there. But we can see on the side, we have got the temperature probe, this copper piece here. So that'll monitor the temperature outside. And then once we get this to the temperature we want, then it'll just kick in when the temperature drops. And then obviously when it gets too warm, it'll stop the heater but the fan will carry on going but what I'm going to do is combine this with a separate thermostat so I can get an accurate temperature 
so we know exactly how warm it is. So just looking at the build quality of this, rather than a normal cheaper heater, which has sort of like a, a wire heating element, this is almost, well, it's like a kettle inside. It's like a big metal coil inside where the heat will be. And it's got a large stainless steel construction, a large fan at the back. So the next thing to do is to actually plug this in and see how much heat it generates and how much it blows it around the greenhouse. This is about two meters long and it might be a little bit longer. So we've put it on, we have got the thermostat, the separate thermostat, which we've got over in the corner there. And that, because it's quite a warm day anyway, I've just set it to come on at 25 degrees. So because it's a bit less than 25 degrees, it's kicked on the heater. And it's pretty quiet, obviously you can hear it, but it's not too loud, it's not rattling. And it is blowing out quite a lot of air, so it will be circulating in quite a large area. And obviously it's not cold yet, so I can't comment on how it keeps the temperature up in this space. But as it's pretty much yes. brick all the way around here, we've got the windows and obviously we've got the polycarbonate roof. Then obviously we've got a lot of insulation compared to normal glass greenhouse here. So hopefully this heater will be enough to keep this place more than frost free. We want to keep this at least eight degrees over winter and we might separate the greenhouse areas. We might have a, a warm area where this heater is and then just a frost free area at the bottom for plants that don't need to be kept warm over winter. So that's the Biogreen Phoenix heater. We'll get it set up eventually on chains hanging from the ceiling so it's off the ground and the chains, yeah, the chains come with the heater and they'll hang way up there way out of space and eventually this garage door will be a nice double glazed glass door and windows so it'll be nice and airy and light in here. So we can't put the heater up yet because the over and under door will knock it down. So that's the heater and we'll report back in a few months time to say how it performs when it's freezing outside. So thanks for watching. Now this absolutely stunning flower is a ginger. This is Hedicium tara and it's these stunning orange flowers, apricot orange with these very dark orange to red stigmas that come out and absolutely gorgeous arrangement of flowers. And it comes and it grows at the end of the stem so you've got the leaves alternating off the stem and right at the end you've got the flowers and they don't last too long, but when they do come, they're absolutely amazing. And this variety of ginger is completely hardy, down to at least minus 10, possibly quite a lot lower. This one is yet to flower, so this is a ready to flower. In the next few days, it will emerge the flowers from the end here, and it will look like this amazing flower in front of me. And it clumps up over the years, so this has been in three or four years now, and we've got some of these big stems coming out this way across the path and we've got further ones going in the other direction as well. But it's an absolutely stunning, wonderful woodland type plant to have in the garden. So it needs a bit of shelter really at its best, nice and warm and you get these amazing flowers come the end of the season. And this is one of the other gingers that grow in the garden and leave out all year round and this is Hedicium forestii. These white flowers that do have a little bit of scent to them, a bit spicy and these really big for ginger leaves and this is completely hardy. I've split this so I've got about 10 plants around the garden now and if this is well fed and well watered this will easily get to two and a half meters tall, possibly approaching three meters. This one here is just two meters, but it's not been especially fed or watered this year. But in some other parts of the garden, it's even taller than this. And like I said, it, it's proper hardy. So you can put a bit of a mulch over it in winter 
of the crown of the plant, but basically it doesn't really need that. As long as it gets lots of water in the growing season, it grows really well, trouble free, no pests or anything like that. And then you get these wonderful, delicate flowers in September. Welcome to Yacht Chris, and today we're going to be planting up some spring flowering bulbs. I'm going to be planting the bulbs into. So now it's going to fill it with compost. Fill this with compost. It's time to start planting some bulbs. I'm going to start with these hyacinths because it says you need to plant them 15 centimetres away from this rim. Covered up the other bulbs, and now I'm going to plant these, which are crocuses, in the middle of the compost. So this is another pot and I've got lots of compost in it and in this one I'm going to be planting some snowdrops. I've also put a few of these nasty side in the middle. Just behind me here, you have the Amicia Zyga Maris that we transplanted earlier in the season before it got into full growth. And as you can see, it's transplanted well and it's over two metres tall now. These wonderful leaves, really unusual, that in the next few hours will start collapsing down as they do every night. And you do get these yellow pea-like flowers a bit later on in the season as well. So, thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK. Join me next week while we're doing more in the garden.